the identity matrix, as you mentioned, it was when you have one, zero, zero, one, if you multiply that to any two by two matrix, doesn't matter what it is, you multiply by two by two matrix, it will end up being, so A, B, C, D, doesn't matter what it is, will end up being A, B, C, D. And that was important when you were trying to solve for the X coordinates. So you want to use the inverse matrix to solve for X. So an example was matrix A multiplied to matrix X is equal to um, matrix B. You know that you can find an inverse. You needed this to become an identity matrix because identity matrix multiplied to X had to give you the same thing as X. Because ideally, that's what you wanted to find. You wanted to find matrix X. That's why you needed the identity matrix. You needed to be something that you multiply X, it will give you itself. That's what you want. Okay? All right, so that's the gist of what you really understand. That's the, the concept that you need to take out, right? Now you've got to apply it. So now that you understand what I'm talking about, you, you get what AD minus B is here. You know what the inverse formula is. Now it's about solving it and applying that, right? Now in your textbook, they no longer... They no longer require you to, or in the textbook anyway, they don't require you to do it manually. They get you to use a calculator. So you find that exercise 2 after 2G, you've been using a lot of calculators. Um, but in the exam, they will give you letters where you are required to do it by hand, or sometimes it's better to do it by hand. Uh, sometimes they require a three step process to show uh, manually that you understand. So that's why I'm going to teach you how to do it manually, and I'm going to teach you how to do it with a calculator so you both. Okay, here we go. This is um, exercise two method, exactly what we just described. Uh, they're just trying to give you the idea. A unique solution basically means two lines where they intersect, and then you have no solutions when they're parallel, and then you have infinitely many solutions basically means when they are exactly the same lines. Now, for each and every one of these, in your exercises, or if you're doing an exam, the only way to show if they are infinitely many or no solution or unique solution is you check out what kind of line you have. So if you have a look at the first one, 2x plus y equals 5, I would rearrange this to y equals mx plus c. And what you can see is this now becomes y equals negative 2x plus 5. Whereas the second equation, it says x minus y equals 4, I can see that this rearranges to, what's that, uh, x minus 4. Okay, so you can already see different gradients. If they have a different gradient, obviously they're going to intersect. That's the only thing that you require for it to intersect. If they have different gradients, they're not parallel. Neither could they be the same line. So that's the first step. To understand when will you have a unique solution, different gradients. If you have a look at the second one, how do you know if there's no solutions? The only time you have no solutions is if they're parallel. So you test it again. You're like, all right, well, if it's 2x plus y equals 5. That's the same thing again. That's y equals to negative 2x plus 5. But then if you have a look at the second one, 2x plus y equals 7, that now becomes negative 2x plus 7. Again, you can try to solve that, as I showed you in the previous slide. You can't solve it when you have the same gradient, it'll end up being zero and you can't, it doesn't make sense. It actually ends up being 70 to 5. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, so you can't find that into the y coordinate. That's why they're parallel, same gradients, but different minus set. Infinitely many means they're the same line. So same gradient, same minus set. Okay, so right here, right here, different m1, m2 does not equal to each other. In this case here, m1 equals to m2, but c1 doesn't equal to c2, meaning the y intercepts. Okay, whereas infinitely many would mean m1 equals to m2 and c1 equals to c2. Okay, that's, that's the gist of what you're really doing. So in the first part of the exercise, you're really just determining do you have the unique solution, infinitely many or no solutions. The only way to do that is if you check out the straight lines. Okay, now. <coughs> Let's have a go with these ones. Question two says, says this is from part of your exercise, uh, uh, textbook, exercise 2F. It says, for each of the following, state whether there is no solution, one solution, or infinitely many. I've done the hard jobs for you. I've rearranged them all for you. So each and every one of them I've rearranged except for the last one. I forgot to do that. 
Now, if you had to look at the first one, <coughs> A, is A parallel or unique, so I mean, no solution, unique solution, or infinitely many? How do you know? Someone tell me. What is it, Marzen? Unique solution, how do you know that? What were you looking at? Gradients. Yeah, that's all you need to find. The only time you have a unique solution is if the gradients are different, and in our case, negative three on two, and two on three, those are my gradients saying, First one has to be unique. <coughs> Whereas B, if you have a look at B, what would B have to be? Unique, no solution, or infinitely many, Ian? Yeah, it's infinitely many because they're exactly the same lines. Okay? And then finally C, <coughs> I rearranged the last part, but you have to rearrange the top one now. X minus 2Y equals 3. What do I end up with if I rearrange it? Alright, let's have a look at the last one. X minus 2y equals 3. What kind of line do I have? Sian. Good. Y equals to... What'd you say again? Okay. Half x minus 3. Is that what you said? 1.5. Alright. Very good. And this will imply what? Parallel? Okay. Excellent. Very good. Okay, yeah, that implies that it has a parallel equation there. All right. Any questions on that question two? Was that pretty easy? Yeah? That was just your basic idea. No solution, unique solution, and infinitely many. Now, what's interesting is then doing something like this now. So this is more typical of your exam questions. Did I do a mistake? <laughs> All right. Now, this is the question I'm more interested in. This one you can do it by hand using what I've taught you about inverse matrices, or you can do this using a calculator. Now, uh, since 2016, they sort of abolished the idea of doing it manually or algebraically, and they expect you to do it on a calculator, and you analyze what you meant to do, or like analyze it and answer the question. Um, but I want to teach you the matrix methods just in case um, they do throw it in, because they do require you to understand what the determinant is, what the inverse does, so you can't do that without doing it manually and understand how to prove it, right? So I'm going to show you manually and then I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. Yeah? So manually, we are going to show you the, the things that we understood. The only way you're going to have infinitely many solutions is if it's the same line, right? And we know that infinitely many solutions will occur when the determinant of your matrix is equal to zero. Because that means there's, a, there's no inverse. The inverse is undefined when it equals to zero. If the inverse is undefined, there is no coordinate. The only way you don't have a coordinate is either it's parallel or no solutions. Yeah? Okay, so there's a lot of steps 
in this here, and that's why it used to be in the exam where it would be three to four marks and you have to go through the steps to show, yeah? So now the first step is, because you're talking about a determinant, it means you need a matrices. That means you need to change the system of equations here into a matrix form. Now I'll show you how it changes. You got three multiplied to x, and this is m multiplied to y. So if you think about it, remember when you do multiplication of matrices, row one has to already have three and m. Because three, row one multiplied to column one, I should have x and y there. See what I'm doing there? I'm just rewriting it because if you say three, if you do matrix multiplication, you would have done first row times column one, it would have been three times x plus two times uh, m times y. And that's what I have here. True? Row one, column one should give me the answer for row one, column one. So therefore, rewriting my equation, it now becomes five. Because I know row one, column one should be the entry. If I multiply this two by two, by two by one, I should get up, get an answer of two by one. And that's why I'm doing two by one. Okay. And to model the second linear equation, I've got m plus two multiplied to x plus five times y. So if I were to write that, that's row two times column one. This should be m plus two, and this should be five. Can you see what I'm doing there? So if I did matrix multiplication now, you would say three times x there, plus m times y, and it goes to the first entry. Now the answer apparently is 5, and I'm saying that is 5. Then I say my second line, m plus 2 times x plus y times y, is then equal to m. Okay, so I'm just rewriting as a matrix, matrix multiplication. How do we feel about that? Does that make sense of what I'm saying? Would you like another practice? I can make up another one and you, you try to figure it out. Good, okay, so now you've got your matrix multiplication. The first step is you're saying, well, you want the determinant of A to equal to zero. That's the only way for you to have infinitely many solutions. Now, if this is your matrix A multiplied to matrix X, that gives you matrix B. To find inverse, we knew that the inverse was one over AD minus BC multiplied to DA, which is five, three, so I'm switching the positions, and negative B, negative C. Yeah? AD minus BC. So this is the key part here. I need AD minus BC to equal to zero. That's what I want. So answering the question, well, determinant of A, which is A times D minus B times C, will end up being three times five, A times D, minus m multiplied to m plus two. This gives you 15 minus m squared minus two m equals the determinant. And what did I want the determinant to equal to? I want it to be zero because I wanted to have no or infinitely many solutions. I wanted the inverse to not exist. So if I do that, determinant is equal to zero. I don't like negative m squares, I normally like positive m's, so I'm going to move everything across to the right, left hand side, so I've got m squared plus 2m minus 15 equals 0, and that's something I like better. Okay. Nice thing is I can factorize this because it's a quadratic, that's a 5, 3m, m, and that's a positive 5 minus 3, if I factorize using quadratics, and that now tells me that m equals to 3 or m equals to negative 5 using null factor law. Well, what does that mean? <clears throat> I did all this algebra, you follow my notes and you're like, alright, cool, I've got m equals 3, m equals negative 5. What does that mean? It's all about the meaning. So what's the point of me finding this m? What have I just found? That when m is equal to 3 or negative 5, Not true. You were close. When m equals 3 and m equals negative 5, what does it tell me? They don't, not that they don't accept something else. They, not necessarily, they don't have a certain point of intersection. Yes. Okay, so then what, what, all we know is it could be parallel or infinitely many. We don't know if it's exactly many, infinitely many. We don't know that. We just know, because all we did is we just tested determinant of A equals zero. So we let that equal zero. It doesn't mean that this has infinitely many solutions. It just means that I can't find a solution 
Now, the only way you can't find a solution is you find a parallel or exactly the same lines. Maybe if you sum in the first one you check. There you go. So that's the final step. In your exam, that's what you get up to. And this is the difference between understanding it and just doing the question. In the exam, what Marzin just said, that's your last mark. Your last mark is to prove, because they'll say, when find n for which you know you will have infinite and many solutions, then if you just wrote n equals three, n equals negative five, you haven't done the question. You only just answered that when n equals three, n equals negative five, you don't have an inverse. That's what you've answered. But you haven't told me, well, how do you know if it's infinitely many, meaning is it the same line or are they parallel? The only way to know is, as you said, and that's what we were doing before, we were getting the straight lines. How do you get the straight lines? You just have to trial and error. That's why it used to be three to four marks, because it takes a lot of steps here. So right here, we've got m equals three. So in our equation, if m equals three, I would have three x plus three y equals five. And you would have done what you did in question two just now, rearrange it, and you get negative three x plus five over three. Okay, so that's my equation there. But then if the second line was equal to 3, m equals 3, then I get 3 plus 2 of x plus 5y equals 3. Rearrange this equation, and I get 5y equals to negative 5x plus 3 divided by 5. I now get negative 5 on 5x plus 3 on 5. So if you simplify these two equations, it becomes y equals negative x plus 5 on 3. Or you have y equals negative x plus 3 on 5. So when m equals 3, what can you clearly say? It is? Yeah. So that means the solution. What I've just done is I answered b. See what I mean? When you say m equals 3, m equals negative 5, it doesn't mean it is infinitely many. We don't know that. For all I know, I don't know if negative 5 is going to give me infinitely many. It might be not parallel. So you have to test it. That's why in the exam, when they did throw this back then, it was four marks because you had to go through those steps. You had to find when n equals three, m equals negative five, what was it? Was it infinitely many? You can't assume it. We know that negative five is going to be infinitely many just because the question's laid out that way. But for your case, you have to prove what you understand. So that's why it was only a two mark step. Once you get up to this step here, that's only two marks. You needed a clarification point, which is a testing point here. And that's where you get your next mark. Yep. So like if you've done A, then you know what the answer for B is, but do you still have to show working for B? Yeah, absolutely, because we don't know. <laughs> In a hypothetical sense, we don't know. It could be both infinitely many. Um, oh. And so we have to test it to find out. Okay, so <clears throat> here we go. So m equals negative 5. <clears throat> You'll get 3x minus 5y equals to 5. And what does that tell me? That just gives me 3 on 5x minus 1 equals 2y. Yes, I think I've done that right. So that's that equation. Whereas the other one would be 7x plus, no, not 7x, minus 5y plus 2, minus 5 plus 2 is negative 3x plus 5y equals to negative 5. <clears throat> and that now gives me, what's that, 5y equals to 3x minus 5, divide both sides by 5y equals 3 on 5x minus 1. Yep. There you go. <coughs> and that's what you can say. So once you've shown all that, now you can say n, when n equals negative 5, you have infinite and solutions, because <coughs> they're both exactly the same lines. Whereas when n equals 3, they are parallel lines, hence their solutions, because they have the same gradient, but it's one to set. Okay. But can you see why that would be a four mark question or a three mark question? Because you've got to take those steps. You know, and uh, that's why I'm saying they don't do that <coughs> anymore in your textbooks. It used to be in the prior, prior to 2016, you could have this example. Now in your textbooks, they don't do that anymore. They just do a calculator. And I'll show you what the calculator looks like so that you know how to do both. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. This, this used to be an example one. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know if they're going to chuck me an example one because you still need to understand. The determinant when it needs to zero, it needs to add one of those. Let me chuck it in. And it might be a requirement that you understand. So, um, but that's what I'm saying. You take a long time that you can calculate. So now I'm accepting that to be a multiple choice. So this should be a multiple choice question, and
um, coordinates of intersection or whatever it is. Yeah? All right, now <coughs> let's do this with a calculator, which is much easier, yeah? So let's have, where's my calculator? Here we go. So first thing, you can do menu 3, 1, which is menu 3 is algebra, 1 is solve, or you can type solve. Okay, so menu 3, 1, solve. What am I trying to solve? <coughs> I need two equations. So I'm going to use this picture here. Okay, so if you're wondering how I got that, the catalog, just next to the, the book, next to the number 9, I click there and I got this, right? My two equations, I've got 3 times x plus m times y equals to 5. Now notice I put times in between each one. If you just wrote m, y, the calculator won't be able to solve it. So the calculator doesn't know the difference between m, y, and m times y. They think that m, y, and m times y are equal to 5. Right? So if you have to put the times in. Whereas 3x, uh, you put 3 and you put an x next to it, they'll know that that's 3 times x. Uh, but just good habits, always put a times in between those letters. Because I get it in the exam all the time, and year 11, when they ask me, and they're like, sir, this isn't working. All I do is just put a times in between it. I'm not meant to do that. See, if you do that end of year 12, they don't help you on that. If you're getting the right method, but your answer's wrong, it's likely that you're missing a times or a little symbol somewhere. Okay. So here we go. Next one. It was m times x, so m plus 2 times x, and plus 5 times y equals to m. And this case here, what am I trying to solve for? <coughs> Not m. X and y. Remember, at the end of the day, what were you trying to solve? You're trying to solve for the intersection of the two lines. Intersection of two lines means you need the x and the y coordinate. So you're not looking for m, you're looking for x and y. So here we go, we say x comma y. Now when you press enter, you should have a, the m variable in terms of m. That's what you're going to have. So if you have a look, this gives you x equals this and y equals this. Now if you have a look at that, logically, when will you not have an x coordinate? Just looking at x, when will you not have an x coordinate? When would that happen? Yes, Dodger. Yeah, because clearly when m equals 3, it's going to be undefined for both of them when m equals 3 here as well. Right? So we've got m equals 3 for that case there. And if you then test that, I'm surprised it doesn't have the negative 5 as well. That's weird. And then you would test it by subbing m equals 3 in, and then you know when you have no solutions. I didn't screw this question. Did you get 2? Oh, was there more answers? Wait, how come you have a... Maybe you're already. Are you guys getting one answer? You're getting two answers because there's two here. Makes sense why you get the negative five. I don't know why. Maybe it's my calculator settings. Is everyone else getting the same as me or something different? That's weird. Anyways, just for the first part anyway, exercise 2F, what they require you to do is you get this and you're meant to analyze when it's undefined and clearly when m equals 3, you have no x and y coordinates, but what you don't know is if there's no solution or is it infinitely many, the only way to find out is to sum back in the test. Okay, now we did that before, we knew that there was no solution. But that's the, that's the method they're doing. So they don't do the algebra, we just did before, no matrices. Just doing that. Okay, that's, that's what 2F is about. Is that cool? Right, I'll give you guys time to uh, next 10, 15 minutes. Just exercise 2F. Pick the questions, do it calculator wise, and also do it by hand. Do it using the determinant of A so you can solve for that. It should be the same answers. Can I ask you some questions? Yes, you can. I'm just going to end the video.